let me take you to Costa Rica. Now, when I swim, I swim out about a half a mile or so. And what do you think? Shark? Shark? No. A 12-foot crocodile. How long does it take for a six-foot guy to run into a 12-foot crocodile when they're going in different directions? <laughs> Not long. I gotta neutralize that set of teeth there because there's no competition between So now, do you remember this thing's going around like this? This thing's coming around anyway, so I think, I'm gonna punch that sucker right in the mouth. And that's what happened. Bam, right in the mouth, he bit. I ripped it out of his mouth. I sprinted towards the beach. Do you have any idea what it means to, to have a crocodile coming at you? Yay! Woo, good catch. See how fast we are? I believe that we are at our very best when we're pushed up against our limits, when we're challenged, when we're in those intense situations, pushed right up to the very max. An acknowledged pioneer in the fitness explosion and peak performance with a 30-year career well-documented in the national and international press, he understands seizing the dream because he's been there and done precisely that. Often called the real-life Indiana Jones, David is a faculty member of Stanford University's Executive Management Program and is the author of three books on fitness, personal performance, and managing change. And that means he knows how to translate complex dynamics into easy-to-follow action steps with take-home value. I was looking at the map of the world and I saw where I could connect continents. But at the Straits of Gibraltar, they knew that you couldn't get across from Africa to Europe. In fact, I first started talking with the smugglers that had the fastest boats in the Mediterranean and had been on many swims and they said, forget it, we're not going on another one. The perception was it was impossible. So I would ask you, what's impossible for you? There's so many things going on in business, changes that happen, and you say, I'll never be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Change some of your beliefs about things? Perhaps you can. I went to the captain of the Monscalpi, a ship that went Tangier, Gibraltar every day, and he said, I don't know why you blokes come down here and try this. It's impossible. And I said, that's what everyone says. He said, it's the center current. There's two on the African side, two on the European side, but it's the center current that goes from the Atlantic into the Mediterranean. That's the one that you're not going to get across. Well, I realized I needed support. So I met this sergeant in the police department, Horace Zamet. He was head of all the five beaches in Gibraltar, the lifeguards. And he said, I was on 19 of these swims last year. Forget it. I said, well, maybe you should take a look and see how I swim. After he saw the swim, he said, woof, this guy might be able to do it. Together, we walked to the Minister of Tourism. And when he heard about it, he said, well, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll sponsor you for this. He said, they'll make you a cage. A cage? What do you mean a cage? Well, didn't Horace tell you about the sharks that we have around here? I said, a cage would be a good idea. Yeah, it's a... <laughs> I could see across there, I could swim across there. I had this optimistic arrogance that it's just a matter of time. I could swim for 24 hours. Uh huh. So there was a sign. I swam out to the cage. They lowered the cage. I swam in the front of the cage so I wouldn't be dragged. After the first two hours, they gave me my first feeding of Coca Cola syrup Woo. and salt water. So I kept on throwing up for the next, uh, until there was no more, and then there was dry heaves, and then I started getting these chest pains. And after about five hours, I had pains in the groin and pains in the shoulder, which always happen in swimming, like pokers going into tender tissue. But this chest pain, never had it. And I can't see Spain, it's still small. And I'm on the way out of there. And I'm thinking of all kinds of ways that I can get out. I'm just thinking of all the ways. You ever been in that situation? Commitment, you're in it, and now you want to get out of it. So I got to think of ways to get out of here without looking bad. 
And I had lots of them. But I came up with a good one. They all knew that it was impossible. i just get out and say, hey, you guys are right. It's impossible. I mean, what did I have in my mind? Meanwhile, they must have smelled this because they're giving me this British thumbs up. You know, you can do it. And I'm saying to myself, you can get here and do it yourself for crying out loud. You see how the kind of pain it is. There's anger. But I changed. They had to go through this too. They were hurting and they wanted it to be successful. We were all in this together. And I understood I grokked that we were a team. I just happened to be the guy that was in the water. But everyone was responsible for this having, having to happen and contributing, support, teamwork. So how we see the event, of course, is called our perception. And I would say perception drives behavior. You want to change your outcome, you change your beliefs inside your perception or your response. Perception plus response equals outcome.